All right, welcome to the introduction to robotics technologies and workplace workshop practices, ERT 107, week number one lesson. Our lesson today is about risks and hazards. So let's look at a video here. Sometimes we're going to start off with a little video or something like that. This here, we got some guys working inside of a stamping press, moving parts around. This is a good example of an unsafe work environment. So these are the kind of things we are going to examine. Probably not into this extreme circumstance, but conditions like this and try to identify what are the hazards, what are the risks, and how can we avoid things like this? What measures can we take to avoid things like this? Okay, that is what the first part of this course is going to be about. So layout for today. What is a hazard? What is a risk? And we're going to talk a, a, as well, what is your lab going to be about? Uh, so some terms you're going to get familiar with today. Hazard, risk, adverse, health effect, acute versus chronic, entanglement, abrasion, shear, nip point or pinch point or draw in, a puncture or stab, an impact, and a crush. We will define what all those things are. So starting off with a hazard, what is a hazard? Hazard, definition for that is going to be any source of potential damage, harm, or adverse health effect, the direct of the effect, the, a direct effect that can cause harm. So a hazard, uh, anything that is a source of potential, potential damage. So when we look at back at that case, of that stamping press, the ram of the press moving up and down, that ram is a hazard. Okay, so anything that can cause harm is considered to be a hazard. The source of the harm. What is an adverse health effect? Any change in body function or structures of cells that can lead to disease or health problems. Injury, disease, genetic effects, decrease in lifespan, change in mental conditions such as stress, anything like that. So any kind of uh, and basically any kind of bad thing that happens to you physically or mentally. So adverse health effect, that could be a broken bone, it could be cancer, it could be stress, it could be uh, carpal tunnel syndrome, anything like that. These are all considered to be adverse health effects. These are all caused by various hazards. Does exposure to hazards always cause adverse health effects? So not necessarily. It's going to depend on what hazards are present. It's going to depend how a person is exposed, uh, what kind of effect could result from a specific exposure a person has experienced, the risk or likelihood that the exposure to the hazardous thing will cause the injury or disease or some incidents causing damage, and how severe would the damage or injury be. So, for example, if we look at being outside on a very sunny day, uh, Ultraviolet light or sunlight is a hazard. It can cause sunburns, but if you go out for five minutes, that is not going to necessarily cause you an adverse health effect. Okay, if you're wearing a hat or if you're wearing sunscreen, that's also not going to cause you an adverse health effect. So just because you're in the presence of a hazard does not necessarily mean you're going to suffer an adverse health effect. So effects may be acute meaning that the injury or harm can be felt as soon as a person comes in contact with the hazardous agent, or it could be chronic, which means it's delayed. Okay, so an example here, let's say cutting your finger with a knife, that would be a, an acute injury. You're going to feel that right away. The effect is going to happen right away. Something that is more of a chronic uh, Health effect. This could be something more like carpal tunnel syndrome. If you are using a mouse for all day long, every day at your job, you might feel that your, your wrist starts to ache or you to cause damage to your wrist after a while. That would be more of a chronic or delayed uh, adverse health effect. So that's the difference between acute and chronic. And once a hazard is removed or eliminated, the effects may be reversible or irreversible. So taking the hazard away immediately might fix the problem 
uh, or if the damage could be done, you don't get it. You don't come back from that. Uh, hazard can cause injury that can heal completely, or the result could be untreatable, such as a disease. So why do hazards exist? Why do we have these hazards in our work environments? Uh, sometimes they're just there and there's no way around it. They have to. Sometimes they exist because standards have been ignored or bypassed. Uh, sometimes it's because of defective or inadequate design, engineering, or manufacturing. Sometimes hazards exist because people have not been trained properly. Sometimes we have poor or inadequate maintenance. And sometimes it's just operator error. Okay, so lots of different reasons why we have hazards occurring. Okay, so for example, let's take driving in a car and look at the hazards that go on there. Uh, if you are driving in a car on a two-lane road, there is oncoming traffic. Oncoming traffic is a hazard, but there's really not any way around that. Okay, so sometimes that's just a hazard that you need to accept the risk from that hazard. Okay. Uh, and you can see where all these other ones come in there. But these basically... Uh, if you want to relate this to driving, operator error, that could be someone driving on the wrong side of the road. Poor and inadequate maintenance, that could be a poorly maintained car that's falling apart. Uh, insufficient training, that could just be a bad driver on the road. Defective or inadequate design, that could be a poorly designed car that falls apart. Maybe you're having a, a recall situation or something like that, presenting additional hazards. Or standards are being ignored or bypassed. Maybe the car was built but not didn't follow required safety standards maybe it doesn't have airbags doesn't have seat belts or something like that they didn't follow the standards that were supposed to be in place for it or maybe it's just complacency uh an example down at the bottom here so they run this machine every day for 15 years no one has ever gotten hurt that could be an excuse for why People don't pay attention to things because it has never happened before. That doesn't mean that it will not happen. It just means that it hasn't happened yet. So it's the different types of hazards we're going to see. Mechanical, electrical, thermal, noise is a hazard, vibration can be a hazard, radiation, ergonomics such as a slip or trip or a fall, materials and substances, or failure of a control circuit. These are all different types of hazards. So what I want you to do now, uh, normally in the class we would do this as a group exercise. We break up into little groups and do this for a couple of minutes. What I want you to do, you can just do this on yourself just after you read this here. So just stop the video. Uh, think of an occupation, maybe one that you have worked in, uh, think of that and write down as many hazards as you can for that occupation. Okay, so think of an occupation and list as many different hazards as you can for that. Okay, so our group exercise here or our individual group, individual exercise, we're going to name an occupation. So let's say my occupation is I'm the guy who works for the city of Windsor goes out and cuts the grass on commercial properties or city city parks or whatever. So what kind of hazards are there out there? So let's look at sun exposure, out in the sun all day. So the sun exposure is a hazard. I'm working a big lawnmower, so the blades of that lawnmower are definitely a hazard. Uh, I'm walking around a lot. There's potential for slip and fall type hazards. And I'm working outside in the summer. There's definitely going to be bees, wasps, other stinging insects out there. Those would all be different types of hazards as well. Okay, so lots of different hazards on that type of job. Okay, uh, talk about risk. Definition of risk. The combination of the probability and the degree of possible injury that a person will be harmed or the experience of adverse health effect if exposed to a hazard. So risk factors in the severity of the injury, the frequency of exposure, and the possibility of avoidance. So those are the three factors when we talk about risk. So the difference between hazard and risk, a hazard is the thing that causes harm. 
a risk is a result of the hazard. So risk example here, the risk of developing cancer from cigar smoking cigarettes could be expressed as cigarette smokers are X times more likely to contract lung cancer than non-smokers. So in this case, the hazard is cigarettes, cigarettes and cigarette smoke, and the risk is contracting lung cancer. And we can talk about that risk as uh, the severity of the, the severity or then the probability of getting lung cancer. Okay, so let's look back to what we listed there as our job or occupation. And let's think of all the risks that would be associated with each one of those hazards that we listed. So if you want to pause here and uh, do that yourself. So for the ones that I had for sun exposure, possible risks there. You've got sunburn, burns, heat stroke. Those are all possibilities. Uh, for the lawnmower blades, you've got cuts, lacerations. Those are all risks that can be associated with that hazard. Slip and falls, you have bumps and bruises, broken bones. And for all the stinging insects, welts, possible ability of allergic reactions as well. Okay, so those are all hazards that cause those risks and they each have different consequences and different possibilities as well. All right, let's look at this picture here. Try to think of how many different hazards and risks you can see here. So we've got Homer here. He is handling plutonium without any protection on here. So the plutonium is a hazard. The risk is probably radiation poisoning associated with that hazard. We have a fall from a height over here. We have Lenny and Carl working on a ladder. Uh, so fall from a height or working at a height is the hazard. And then a fall, broken bone from a fall could be the risk here. Here's another picture risks and hazards here. There's lots of them going on in this picture. So again, we have fall from a height. Don't have a very good no ladder here or no tie off. We have a guy trying to clean off his clothes with compressed air. Uh, as we talked about in the shop rules, you're not allowed to do that. We have a frayed electrical wire here. So damaged equipment would be a risk, sorry, a hazard. The risk would be electrocution from that. We have here an abrasion hazard. Risk would be uh, getting an abrasion from that hazard. We have a guy welding right beside some flammable barrels. Uh, the hazard would be uh, an explosion and the uh, the risk would be basically death from explosion. Uh, and then we have someone picking up a heavy load without bending their knees. So this would be an ergonomic risk and that's ergonomic hazard. And the risk would be uh, back injury due to lifting. Okay. So lots of different hazards and risks in this picture. And then let's look for some very specific mechanical hazards here and what they mean. So the first one is entanglement. So this is contact with a rotating surface. So anytime you are working with something that spins, see there's a, a possibility of entanglement. This is why we have rules against long sleeves in the shop, long hair in the shop, no wearing things around your neck. These are all entanglement hazards. So this would be things getting caught on something that is spinning and then pulling you into that. That is the symbol for entanglement, which is pretty awesome. Or that one. So the lathe is another one. Drill press, definitely an entanglement hazard. A crush. These are symbols for crush. This is where you have one part of the machine that is moving and another part that is stationary and you're getting caught in between. That is a crush injury. Or a crush hazard. A shear. Uh, to cut or force apart. An example would be scissors. 
basically you have two moving pieces moving in opposite directions and getting caught in between. That is a shear hazard. An auger is another good example of this. An impact, blunt force against the inertia of the body. So getting hit by a robot arm. So something that is heavy and moving fast can cause an impact. A draw in or a nip point. Draw in leads to entanglement. So you can see here where we have a two pulleys with a belt going around them. If this is not guarded, this creates a nip point. So if you get stuck, if you get a finger stuck in here, you will get drawn in and caught in between that pulley and belt. A puncture or stab, penetration by a sharp object, such as a nail gun, sewing machine, drill press, Friction or abrasion, like a grinder. That's like a grinding type injury. And then electrical hazards. We'll get into this later on and talk about different types of electrical hazards. Lots of different rules for electrical hazards. Arc flash and burns. Cause me there. Best way to avoid electrical hazards, knowledge and execution. And then next week we'll be talking a lot about this risk assessment chart and how to reduce and avoid risk. Okay, now what are we going to do in the lab this week? Or in the lab, the first half of the lab, you'll be working with a drill press. Okay, so you'll be learning about the drill press and how to use it safely and how to do some different machining operations. So what you'll be doing, you'll be using this drill press and you'll be making a little project that looks like this. So there's a couple different functions that will be going on here. Uh, there'll be some reaming, uh, countersinking, counter boring, drilling, all these different operations, tapping holes as well. So you'll be learning all about this different terminology, how to lay these things out, how to use each of these safely. Okay, so that is what you'll be doing in the lab. All right, so that is it for the lesson for week one. At this point, uh, we'll do another little video here on how to do the assignment. Uh, and that will be it for week one. Good luck.